Hello everyone and welcome back to Tabletop. I'm your host, Board Game Nerd, and today we're going to be looking at the brand new cards for Magic the Gathering Jumpstart. And I'll have you know that there are just so many good cards that are released. Every time I try to make a new video, another bomb just kind of shows up at the door. And I rounded up the cards of note so that all you can peruse through it, have a look through it, and I'll also link down below if you want to have a look at all the sources yourself, look through all the entire deck list. But I have to tell you, there are a lot of bad cards, but there are some really nice reprints as well as some brand new cards that probably are going to become staples. So let's have a look at it right now. The first card I want to discuss with all of you is Nayat of the Dire Hunt. Now she is for two colorless, a green and a green. She's a tree tree legendary creature, so she can be your commander. Whenever one or more of your creatures you control fight or become blocked, draw a card. So that's already really good. But her second effect is at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay two and a red or a green. If you do, double target's power at the end of turn. That creature must be blocked at combat if available, if able. So if you have a death touch creature on your field, you can just pay your tree mana and force one of your opponents to block it and basically kill one of their bombs. And her good ability is the first one, which allows you to draw a card. Oh god, that is a really good ability for only a four mana cost. There's a lot of cards inside green that will allow you to ramp up, but this is the first time I've seen something that will allow you to draw cards so efficiently, as well as as well as provide a secondary effect where you can just go, it's, this is really good. Like you can just use it during the late game to finish off your opponents. You can use it as a tactic to remove some of their creatures with death touch. It's going to be difficult to test to how strong this card will be before it releases and all the other cards are released, but at the moment, I think this is one of the most powerful cards to be released in the Jumpstart format. The next card that was released just yesterday is the card by the name of Tiny Bones, Trinket Teeth. Don't think too hard about why there is a child skeleton running around. That's, that's just going to make you sad. But for one and a black, this is a 1-2 legendary creature, and his ability is just so bonkers. At the beginning of each end step. If an opponent discarded a card this turn, you draw a card and you lose a life. Basically it has the Fraxian Arena built into it, but its second ability is for 4 and black black. Each opponent with no cards in hand loses 10 life. Now that is amazing. If they have no life inside their hand, you can basically use a Bola Citadel to <laughs> wipe them off the board. And I find myself kind of drawn to this card because there's so many ways to make opponents discard cards. I'm a big fan of effects that last during other players' turns. There's Navi, who's able to just cycle cards every turn for free. And then there are cards that just give you passive benefits while they're inside the command zone. This card, I think, is a good direction towards something that I want to see more inside the format. For me personally, I think I'm going to use this with the Teteri's Tutelage, along with the Nico Bolas, and then just force them to have no cards in their hand. And then we'll just activate our ability and force everyone to lose 10 life. That's how I would combo this, but clearly there's so many ways to combo it. Next thing I'm going to point your attention to are some powerful reprints we're going to have inside this set. Now, the first one I'm going to introduce you to is Reanimate. For one black mana, you're going to be able to bring one creature from a graveyard, not just your own, and bring it under your control. You lose life equal to its converted CMC, which inside Commander is literally nothing. Plus, getting a 7 cost for 7 life is not an equal trade. The 7 cost card will always be more powerful than the 7 life will ever give you. And I'm pretty excited to see this back in the format. I'll mention this later on, but Reanimate is going to be one of those cards that's not going to be available inside Arena, even though Jumpstart cards are going to come to Arena and available inside the historic format. But let's move on to our next card. Young Pyromancer is for 1 and a red, a 2-1 that has the ability, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 red elemental creature. Not gonna lie, this is a staple of a lot of red decks at the moment. Getting 1-1 creatures for casting spells and sorceries, which you're already going to do, just amazing. And it's going to bring the cost of this card down, as well as, I don't know, give people these staples. I'm, I'm quite enjoying what's going on with Jumpstart at the moment. There are some eh, kind of crappy reprints or some new cards that are kind of bad, but there are also a bunch of cards that are coming into the format that people are finally getting the opportunity to have again that haven't seen reprints in a very long time, thus driving down the price. Another Black Commander that I want to have your attention on is... Drana, Liberator of Malakir. For one and two black, she is a two tree, legendary creature, vampire ally. So even if you're not using her inside as a commander, you can use her inside your Malakar deck or whatever. It's just such a good card. Now read this. Whenever Drana, Liberator of Malakar deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 counter on each attacking creature you control. 
That is ridiculous. This is just... Just populate your entire board with 1-1s, attack, and whatever comes true. If she manages to get true there, use your rogue's passes or something on the Dranat, and then you're going to be able to just constantly power up your army. There is... This is so good. M21 has a lot of token support, and this card is built for token support. So put two and two together and you're gonna have an amazing time. Now speaking of amazing reprints, let's take a look at Oracle of Mold Daya, which hasn't seen a reprint in years. Now it's an elf shaman for tree and a green, a two-two. You may play with a you may play an additional land each of your turns, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play lands from the top of your library. Wow. So basically you have a deck that's just full of lands, maybe 33% of it most of the time. And you don't even have to waste your hand space in order to have those lands. This is an essential card. It's a shame that we haven't seen it reprinted in any of the other sets, but now that it's coming to jumpstart, I can tell you now, this is going to be a driving force, bringing down the price. It's going to become more accessible to more players. This really is the year for Commander, and you can really tell with these supplemental products, they're always aiming towards bringing a better Commander experience, as well as bringing down the price for all of these reprints and cards. The next card I'm going to have us look at is Veldalcan Archmage for 2 blue blue. It's a 0-2, and whenever you cast an artifact spell, draw a card. Now this is pretty good for your artifact decks, it's pretty good for the Urza deck because you can tap him to play this, and then you also get draw advantage as well. Now, I'm not too sure how I feel about this one. It's really good inside a single archetype, and it's kind of expensive to play if you're not playing with the Urza, but there are ways to cheat her out in order to, in order to get more draw power inside your deck. I quite enjoy things that give you more draw power, and it's nice seeing some support for artifacts. Speaking about artifacts and enchantments, this is an enchantment that I have my eye on, which is Exquisite Blood for 4 and a black. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And this is really powerful in decks that don't have a lot of ways to regenerate health, and it's only one enchantment as well. So it's not... The thing that I love about this card is that it's whenever an opponent loses life. You don't have to be the cause of that life loss. You can basically just <laughs> benefit from other people smacking each other, and then your life total is just going to go up. But be warned, there are drawbacks to having a large amount of life because you're making yourself the biggest target on the board. Now, the last card that I'm going to have us pay any attention to is the Scholar of the Lost Trove for 5 blue blue. Whenever Scholar of Lost Trove enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant sorcery or artifact card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If an instant or sorcery cast this way will be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Now, why would you want to use this card? There are a few things that are worth the 7 mana cost. There is in Garrick's Wake, which costs 9. There's also all those ultimatum cards that you can probably cheat out and then use again. I think Scholar of the Lost Trove is going to be... I don't know if I call it essential, but I would say in decks where you're not allowed to replay cards, like unless you're playing a Casted as the Mage, there is some merit to running a Scholar of the Lost Trope inside your deck if you have some expensive sorcery spells in it. And those are all the cards I think that are worthy of mention in the last 12 hours. But let's move on to some more news, which is Magic the Gathering Arena. Now, Jumpstart is going to be available in Arena as well. And it's historic, actually. And it's going to be standard legal and historic. Now, this is big. This is bringing 500 cards into a format that we don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be such a mind bust just having so many things flood the market at the same time. And we're looking for new combinations. I was thinking that we're going to be making maybe shrine decks in the future, but now I'm not too sure. It's been confirmed by Wizards of the Coast that there are 20 cards from the Jumpstart booster packs that will not see their way into Magic Arena. And so far, there are eight cards in particular that will not see any card... They will not see their transfer. That have been confirmed. The first is Ball Lightning, Chain Lightning, Exhum, Father Seer, Lightning Bolt, Reanimate, Scourge of Neltolt, and Time to Feed. And it's not surprising to see why these cards aren't going to find their way into Magic Arena. They are just way too efficient. They are just way too strong. And you're going to be gearing the arena towards a certain meta that you don't really want it to be in just yet. I think in the future these cards will find their way into the game, whether it's through different sets or it's uh, through different products, but currently I don't think they are 
I think Wizards have made the right choice to leave these cards out of the meta. You can make your own speculations and judgment calls on this one. I'll leave the link down below if you want to have a look at all the cards that just came out. And I believe that it is all the news that we have for today. There's nothing else I can really talk about. So until next time, everyone, please be sure to leave a comment down below to tell me what you're looking forward to. Until next time, everyone, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more board game nerd content. And I'll see you all next time.